Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be doing a brief introduction to the mass spring oscillator. And so let's give a little bit of background here. A damped mass spring oscillator consists of a mass M attached to a spring fixed at one end. So here's our mass M, here's a spring it's connected to, and then the spring is fixed right here on one end. In our case, um, K is going to represent the stiffness of the spring, and then B is going to represent the damping coefficient for friction. Okay, so that's just because of our textbook. And then we have, if you look at our diagram, we have an equilibrium point, and then Y is going to be the displacement from the equilibrium point. Okay, so a little bit of uh, equations here. F equals MA, so force equals mass times acceleration, based on Newton's second law. And if we write this as our differential equation, we have force equals our mass times the second derivative of our position with respect to time. So this is for position function y of t of the mass from the equilibrium point. And so this is a second order differential equation. That's why that's going to come up in this class. And so just some other information for us. Um, stiffness and friction resist displacement. Other external forces on the oscillator are going to be lumped together and just denoted F sub X EXT, so like external forces. And then uh, Hooke's law says that the force of the spring is equal to some negative uh, proportion times the displacement. So in our case, K is our mass, our, our stiffness of our spring. And then the force due to friction is negative uh, the damping coefficient times the rate of change of the position of the spring. So it's the first derivative there. All right, so our differential equation for the mass spring oscillator has this form here, where we have our mass times the second derivative of y, plus b, our damping coefficient, times the first derivative of y, plus k, our stiffness, times y, equals our force of our external, um, our external forces. And so uh, this is the inertia, the damping, and the stiffness. And then no, no friction or external forces implies that you actually are working with perpetual motion. So whether or not you have a background in physics doesn't um, really, you don't really need that here. I just wanted to give you a little bit of background. If you've learned about this in physics, that's good. If you haven't, that's still okay. We're just going to be working on solving it mathematically, the second order differential equations. So we're just going to do a quick example where we verify that this is in fact a solution. So y equals sine of 6t plus 2 cosine of 6t. We want to verify it's a solution to this initial value problem. Notice this is a second order differential equation. Your highest derivative you see present is second derivative. And it's an initial um, value problem because we have some initial conditions. And notice because it's a second order equation, we actually have to have initial conditions involving the zero with derivative, the original function and the first derivative. And that's going to allow us to get our constants if we were solving. But in this one, we're just verifying. And then we're also going to find the maximum of uh, y, the absolute value of y, which is our maximum displacement of our spring, our mass on our spring. OK, so let's start with the first derivative. So we have our potential solution here. Let's differentiate it, Okay, just using your chain rule and trig derivatives. And then we need the second derivative as well, so differentiate that again. And then we just substitute those back into our differential equation. So 2 times the second derivative plus 72 times y, the solution, should equal 0. Okay, And if you simplify, it does. So it does satisfy our uh, equation here, but let's make sure that the initial conditions also check out. So if we plug in 0 into our solution function, it should equal 2 based on what we're told up here. And so if we do that, just sine of 0 is 0, cosine of 0 is 1, and it does. So the other initial condition, when we plug in 0 into the derivative, it should equal 6. And then we do get that that equals 6. So that works out. So we just verified that this is in fact a solution to this initial value problem. And now let's find the maximum displacement. 
of our mass on our spring. And so this actually occurs at the peak of a wave. If you were to graph the motion of the uh, mass on the spring, um, it, it would look like a sine wave. And so the maximum displacement from the equilibrium point occurs anytime you're at the peak of a wave. And so then if you think about that, that means your first derivative is zero. If you, let me draw this out really quick. If you think about the fact, ugh, hopefully that's okay, it's a wave, uh, that at the peak of a wave, you have a horizontal tangent line right there. And so that should be horizontal. Sorry for the ugly drawing, but that's why the derivative is zero. Okay, so we set our derivative equal to zero and solve for t. And so you have um, just solving for t using some of your background from trig. And let's just move over to the next slide. Okay, and so then remember how to solve for the argument of a trig function. You're going to use inverse trig functions. And so t is 1 6 tangent inverse of 1 half. Okay, but we actually want what happens when we plug in this t value into y to get the actual um, displacement. This is a time when it occurs, so we want the position. So we plug it back into our y function, do a little bit of simplifying, and we get that this is square root 5. All right, so um, as a decimal, you can plug that into the calculator if you want, but that's the maximum displacement of our mass. And so the last thing to mention to you guys um, is just that some systems may initially behave erratically, but then what happens is they eventually synchronize with the driving force, the force that's driving them. And so in that case, we have what's called a general synchronous solution. And it looks like this. So your solution to your differential equation is y equals a cosine, this is a Greek omega, so a cosine omega t plus b sine omega t. And then this is where the first derivative, you can just differentiate this, um, but it's here. And then the second derivative is, I just worked that out for you as well. So you can use this in general if you know you're looking for a synchronous response of your mass spring oscillator. And so the, the last thing here, most of the problems that we're actually going to be working on will involve linear, second order, ordinary differential equations that have this form. Okay, And we have constant coefficients, and then it's going to equal some known function, and then this is going to allow us to find explicit solutions. Okay, so that's just our brief introduction, and that's it for this one. Thanks for watching.